Hi, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. Oh, these people are always lying to us. They just can't tell us the truth about everything, you know? It's like oh, abomination. I mean, really, I mean, it's just like ridiculous. Everything that is going on in this world it's the most crazy world I've ever experienced. I couldn't believe what has happened t to me, you know, like throughout the life I've had. It's just incredible, you know. It's like, you know, they talk about democracy and everything like that. And democracy, according to Plato, was one level above tyranny. You know, like the ideal situation is having an aristocracy where somebody really cares about, you know, the way things are going. It's like, what does Obama care about? Is his prestige or, or what? You know, it's like, you know, the craziest world. And there's the word they don't translate correctly. It's the kragma, the money of the beast, on your mind or in your hand. And there's the Greek-English lexicon by Liddell Scott showing you that kragma means the impress on the coin or stamp money coin so that no one buys or sells without the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. And these people, you know, it's like these idiot religion people and the, you know, Islam and we've got like the Buddhists and everybody. This is like totally retarded, you know, it's not, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's totally illogical, and if it's not logical, then it's not, it's not of God. And so, like, we've got all these people telling us these crazy, stupid things, like, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, then you'll be saved. And that's totally retarded. I'm telling you, like, this guy, St. Paul, and he's not a saint at all, but you wouldn't know who I'm talking about if I didn't call him St. Paul. But, like, you can see here in the book of John, it's John 1.1. 1, 1. They say, in the beginning was the Logos. And uh, Logos means logic, and logic means reasoning. But they don't want to tell you that, you know? It's like, people, you know, Karl Marx said that religion is the opiate of the masses. And uh, opiates are a stupefier. It makes you stupid. It makes you, like, totally blissed out, you know. And you just forget about how horrible things are. And, you know, people are really, 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 really tripped out on this, this these opiates, you know. It's like one of the most abused drugs in the United States are, are like legal drugs. It's these um, opiates, you know, morphine and oxycontin and things like that. And, you know, it's like an escape from reality and reality really sucks. I mean, you know, like uh, how, how easy is it for you to find a good paying job? It used to be really easy, you know, when I was growing up. You can't probably tell by looking at me, but <laughs> you know, I'm not that young of a girl anymore, and uh, I've experienced a lot of crazy stuff in my lifetime, and I never expected it to turn out like this. I really didn't. I you know I thought, you know, when I grew up, you could become a garbage man and make a good living, you know, hanging out on the back of a garbage truck, but today it's just you know, gone totally crazy, and and it's just, you know, the money market system, you know, they, uh, Karl Marx had something to say about the labor, the labor is exported, and, you know, they make more profit selling things overseas than they do here, and uh, so they don't distribute things evenly, and, you know, like, how many people does it take to really create everything, We, you know, it's like, I, I've sewed my own clothes. I mean, the thing I'm wearing right now is really easy to make. It's like a block print, 
with a silk screen and some it's a, well, this is one of the better ones but you know somebody like really did a lot of artwork on here and uh, I, I don't know how much I paid for this but it was probably like less than twenty dollars and it's really a pretty artwork let me see if I can show you everything here there it is <laughs> it's like a big bird you can see the big bird whoops <laughs> There it is, there's the big bird. But, you know, I mean, it's like, what's going on in this world? You know, it's like people are dying in, in Iraq and, and Afghanistan. And Afghanistan is where they have all these opium, op opium production. And like after the Taliban stopped producing opium, the United States invaded. It's like, after um, the Golden Triangle in Vietnam, it's like the Tonkin Gulf. I mean, you know, it's r totally ridiculous what they teach these kids in school these days. I don't think, I don't think any of you probably know about the Tonkin Gulf situation. You know, in order to get involved in the Vietnam War, the uh, plutocrats, the the government, Lyndon Baines Johnson came up with this total bullshit lie about um, somebody bombing one of our ships in the Tonkin Gulf, you know, it got everybody really angry in the United States, and that's what started this whole Vietnam War, was this lie, it's called a false flag operation, that um, got us involved in Pearl Harbor, and it got us involved in World War II as a false flag operation. You know, the government lies to us. They engineer these false flags to pretend like our enemy ha has attacked us. And it's just like 9-11 too. And uh, they have um, these neocons and the new American empire or whatever it is. You know, these people want to get us involved in these wars. and. And uh, President Eisenhower warned us of these, um, uh, what do they call it, the, uh, uh, the military-industrial complex. And that's exactly what happened in Vietnam. They had Brown and Root and some of these other companies exactly like what uh, Dick Cheney had. He, Dick Cheney had these, uh, what do they call it, the... Um, Dick Cheney's big corporation uh, that he started in the Iraq War. <clears throat> Gosh, what the heck was that? I mean, it's so it's so stupid and obvious, you know. I mean, all wars are caused for the sake of getting money. It's a very popular quotation from so many people in the world. Uh, all wars are caused for the sake of getting money, and. Uh, you know, we're dying for Israel, and, and like, this would just happen the other day, June 8th. Today is, what is it? Today is uh, June 15th, and um, the Israelis deliberately tried to sink this USS Liberty. They put napalm on there, and if it wasn't for one of the um, employees, one of the soldiers, the sailors on this ship that... Um, got out an SOS message that they were being attacked by, um, I don't know if he said exactly that the Israelis were, but, you know, they scrapped this USS Liberty. They just took it to the junkyard. It should be, it should be like in New York Harbor, you know, the, the Israelis attacked our, our Navy. You know, it's the most outrageous thing that has happened in, in, in our history, but, you know, like, some of these stupid, and I'm I'm telling you, they're they're stupid. These people that believe that the Israelis can do no wrong, but um, you know these stupid Zionist Christians. You know, I mean, the 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 Israelis deliberately attacked this this vessel that was in international waters, and they tr they were going to blame it on Egypt in order to get the United States involved in the Middle East uh, in the Seven Day War, Six Day War. And, uh, you know, it's like there's, you know, George Bush and Ronald Reagan and 
and um, Gerald Ford, Gerald Ford was on the Warren Commission. It's like, I mean, God, I mean, you know, democracy is, like I said, one level above tyranny, according to Plato. And, uh, you know, mob rule is, is exactly what democracy is. And what we need is like an aristocrat, you know, somebody that really cares about the world and wants to make the world a better place for our children and really has nothing else to live for. I have nothing else to live for. I mean, I don't give a rat's ass if I die tomorrow. Because, I mean, you know, the way things are going, it's just, it's just the most horrible thing. I mean, I didn't grow up thinking that the world would turn out like this. You know, God has blessed me with a lot of things, but I can see the way other people are struggling, and I don't see any real future for them. And Obama, like, okayed all these illegal immigrants to become, um, you know, employable persons. And there's no jobs here. It's this capitalist system that we've exported our jobs to wherever it is that the labor is the less amount, like China or, you know, first they started out in Mexico. That wasn't cheap enough for them. And, you know, the Chinese workers aren't doing very good. It's just totally outrageous. I mean, you know, you look at, like I saw on TV about how Greece is doing, and they're not doing very good, you know. It's like, but why? Why not? You know, I mean, what does it take for people to live? It's like, we could, we could make a whole bunch of different fabrics. I mean, how many people does it take to, um, you know, harvest the cotton? There aren't that many. I've figured it out, you know. It's like, if you look at the amount of people that are harvesting all our broccoli and cauliflower and uh, pinto beans and everything else, it, especially the corn, and, and um, you can make tortillas out of corn and cornmeal out of corn and, and the soybeans and all these things, it's like, you know, this, this world is totally screwed up and, and it's so simple and easy. I mean, you know, modern machinery was supposed to make things easy for us, but it isn't, you know. It's like, why do people have to be, like, 30 years of slavery to own a house, you know, to get a 30-year mortgage? That's the usual mortgage there is. So you're like a slave for 30 years to pay off this stupid sheetrock and 2 by 4 home, you know, on some vacant land. And, um, you know, they could build really nice condominiums on the ocean or something, but they don't. And that's another big problem is this global warming that people aren't paying much attention to. The, you know, once the oceans rise and uh, they uh, are going to, like, flood all these coastal areas, especially, like, in places like um, Bangladesh or that are very low-lying. And, um, you know, I mean, it's just, like, totally ridiculous. I mean, it's all because of this money. And, um, you know, we've got bankers, bookkeepers, accountants, sales clerks, all these people. They're just, like, pushing papers. They're not producing anything. They're not creating anything. And, you know, you could design your own clothes and you could make your own, like, silk screens and make a prettier little dress than this, you know. This is one of my favorites. I just totally love this. I mean, somebody made this with a silk screen and they cut all these little things out. And, and uh, you know, it's the most, it's a really beautiful work of art that I probably only paid like, probably less than $20 for. And, uh, you know, these morons and idiots will pay hundreds of $10,000 for like a designer dress. But, I mean, you know, they don't really look that good, and people pay so much attention to what's going on in Hollywood. I mean, like, you know, the best, easiest way for, like, the world to change would be for somebody like me to hook up to, with, like, you know, Madonna or or Lindsay Lohan or, or Yoko Ono or somebody famous, you know, uh, Mel Gibson. You know, if Mel, you know, Mel Gibson would make a movie about, like, you know, he's made some pretty good movies, and so has um, Oliver Stone. You know, Oliver Stone made that movie about JFK, the, what the heck did he call that? I've got a, a brochure I made about it. Uh, 
but um, yeah, I mean, the the CIA killed JFK because JFK was like, you know, not going to get us involved in the Vietnam War, and the Vietnam War was all about this uh, this uh, golden triangle where they were growing this heroin in order to uh, stupefy people. You know, Karl Marx said that. Religion is the opiate of the masses, but, uh, you know, opiates, opiates stupefy you, you know, they make you fucking, uh, stupid. And so, like, uh, you know, it's like, um, these religions are irrational and they're not based on logic. And like I told you in John 1-1, Jesus is the Logos, or logic of God, and they don't want to tell you any of this stuff. You know, if they really told you the truth, you know, like Jesus Christ said, you can't serve God or money. You'll either love the one or hate the other. And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, if people realized that Jesus Christ was a radical and he sought to ups upset the tables of the money changers, you know, that's the first thing he did when he got into Jerusalem was to upset the tables of the money changers. You know, it's like, they don't translate the word mammon correctly. Mammon is an Aramaic word for money. And it's also a Hebrew word for like fortune and, and um, you know, mammon. I mean, it's just, I just don't totally, you know, these people, you know, it's like, these people in the world, it's like, I can't believe it how stupid people are. And it really makes me depressed to, you know, like, you know, these people, they vote for, you know, I mean, I'm glad that this guy, Jesse Kelly, lost against um, uh, Barber, this guy, what was his name, Ron Barber, down here locally. It's like, you know, they want to tear up these mountains in uh, uh, Sierra, in, uh, what is it, the, what is that? Uh, Santa Rita Mountains, they want to put a mine in there, these, the Canada, these people from Canada. I mean, you know, it's like um, plutocracy, Pluto. Pluto is the god of the underworld and dead. And, uh, you know, all the riches come from under the ground. So Pluto, plutocracy, plutonium, and uh, all these things is um, involved with money and like, you know, it's like, I just don't understand, you know, like, why don't they tell us about, you know, the Kennedy assassination? It, you know, you guys weren't born then probably, but it, it's like when I was born, everybody knew where, where they were when Kennedy was assassinated and you probably know where you were when this 9-11 thing happened. And, and I certainly remember where I was, and I couldn't believe that these World Trade Center buildings came straight down. You know, it just didn't, I, I just like, what do you mean the, an airplane came in there and these buildings just disintegrated and came straight down? It just doesn't make sense to me. And there's a lot of architects and engineers that are, you know, I mean, like, I, you know, a logical person would think that, you know, how can this happen? I mean, you know, an airplane crashed in there, and they have a very good steel frame structure around these World Trade Center buildings. I mean, you know, even the M Empire State Building was designed to withstand um, uh, an airplane, you know. It's like they have a lot of fog along the eastern seaboard there, so they had to design these buildings to withstand uh, uh, yeah, an airplane hitting them. But I don't know how many of you actually realized, but they had a building that was called World Trade Center Building Number 7. And it was like the third building in New York City that came down that day. And you can see here, if you go on the internet, you know, and type in World Trade Center Building Number 7, you can see how it just came like straight down. It was like a controlled demolition. And, um, you know, it's like, it's just the most ridiculous and horrible thing like I was saying earlier we've had a lot of these past presidents in the United States here who who actually covered up the assassination of uh, President Kennedy 
And here we go, like on the Warren Commission, we had um, Gerald Ford was on the Warren Commission, and Ronald Reagan was on one of these, um, what do they call it, the, Ronald Reagan was on the uh, Rockefeller Commission, and these guys were Watergate burglars. You know, it was very interesting to, in these past few days, like I was telling you earlier, that the um, USS Liberty was deliberately uh, attacked by Israel, and, uh, and they tried to sink it, but there was hardly any, any news about this. And they, they sunk this ship. Well, they didn't, they didn't sink it, actually. They got a, uh, they got a SOS out in time. One of, the, one of the crew members happened to piece together one of these antennas, I mean, that um, Israel tried to um, discommunicate with these um, heat-seeking missiles. But since one of the missile, one of the aerial antennas was was shut off uh, that um, they they survived. I mean, it was a miracle that the USS Liberty got this SOS out, and um, so like they had to call off this attack. The Israelis tried tried to sink this ship, this United States ship, and um, and get us involved in the Six Day War so that. We would attack uh, Egypt and um, get um, the Soviet Union out of there. The uh, what was that guy's name? Nasser, who was head of Egypt. I mean, you know, I don't have very much respect for this Islamic religion. I think it's one of the dumbest. It's got to be like you know one of the most irrational religions in the United in the world. You know, I mean. If you have to rank religions by how irrational and stupid they are, it's hard to, um, I don't know which one is worse, you know, Judaism, Christianity, or Islam. The uh, uh, Buddhists are kind of retarded and stupid and superstitious. I went to Thailand, and I, I, I had very little respect for, for these people. You know, you'd pay money to release these birds and things like that down on, in Bangkok and I just, you know, it's like, you know, religion is the opiate of the masses. It's like pie in the sky and it's not rational, you know. We, we can make this world a better place. It's not that hard. You know, we could um, easily make our own clothes. I mean, how many people does it take to harvest all the cotton anymore? And um, that's one of the worst karma things we've ever done is, you know, to invite these slaves over from Africa. And I don't know if you've been following the news in Chicago or not, but, you know, they've been having, like, these these mobs in, in, in Chicago. You know, they're blacks, and uh, they've been robbing people. And uh, so it's not a very good world, and I never expected it to be like this. It, it shouldn't be this way. Things could be so much easier and nicer if we eliminated money. You know, this, this Jesus Christ upset the tables of the money changers, and that's exactly what we need to do today. These money changers are on Wall Street, and uh, the Babylon and the temples are these big bank buildings down there, and they worship money five days a week. So anyway, my name is Raquel, in order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. God bless you. Peace and love. Bye.